Hey, what's up everybody? Sysadmin Sean here coming at you with another Sysadmin Struggles video. Um, this is a topic that's been kind of weighing on me a lot more recently than other times in the past, so I wanted to talk about it now, partly to get it off of my chest and partly to let everyone out there know of a situation that's going to come uh, to you in some form or fashion during your time in a Sysadmin type career, an IT career, really any career. Uh, we'll have this sort of these sort of issues, but I'm going to come at it from a sysadmin point of view. So what we're going to be talking about today is turnover, promotions, and reorgs, and how those three things will affect your mental state, your workload, your pay, your plan or vision for the the future of your position and where you wanted to go and what you want to do, all those kind of things. So let's start with the first one, and that's turnover. Turnover is the term. I use and most everyone seems to use in the IT field when somebody leaves when when maybe one of your coworkers gets a new job at Amazon and they're super excited and and you know you're like oh man I'm going to miss them that you know you're going to be down a person you know you're going to be down a person you're hopefully already getting the hiring process started to replace them and you've hopefully also gotten a giant data file of documentation about everything they did and how they did it and why it was done the way they did it those aren't always the case so turnover can bring in a lot of stressful stuff. When somebody leaves that knows a lot and you're still there, obviously you're still doing your job. And if you were, you know, if you worked closely with that person, you probably will have to cover their base. You know, you're going to have to take over the responsibilities that they mainly managed while they look for the replacement or someone else on your team that, that worked closely with them, which means their workload is going to not so much double, even though it is kind of doubling, it'll be it'll be similar to that. You know, you you need to have a little bit of uh, understanding, compassion. You know, they're not going to be able to get stuff done as fast as they were before because they're doing two people's workload. And then when the new person gets hired, you're going to have to train that person. And depending on previous experience and differences in your environment versus the environment they came from, that could be six months to a year at the minimum. Um, just to get their feet running, get their, you know, get in, get in the system, get all their permissions, everything squared away, depending on your onboarding process and your HR and all that jazz. You might as well give yourself six weeks to a year or six months to a year of just balancing projects and training of the new folks. And then that leads to our next one, promotions. So promotions are great. You know, currently we're going, we're, we've had a, quite a few promotions lately. We had some of our you know, help desk level two technicians get promoted um, and one did a turnover. So, you know, to both situations have occurred. So their area is down two personnel right now and they're looking for two more people. But again, with that, it's almost like turnover because now that those two positions are empty, they're down two whole positions worth of people and everyone else is having to play uh, coverage for those positions, which is rough. You know, and you want to you want to help as much as you can, and you also want to make sure that they get someone hired as soon as possible. But that's where you know even promotions can make things struggle, and that's completely different from what can happen if you get promoted. So let's say you are a regular system administrator, and then your boss comes up to you and says, "Hey, I'm promoting you to senior." The other system administrators are going to you know answer to you, report to me. So. Uh, in one of my previous positions, that's where I was at. I was a senior system administrator and the two other system administrators basically worked with me on all the projects that I didn't control like their pay or if they could go sick or go on vacation. It was good to know that stuff, but it was more about, you know, making sure that if I had something I needed to get done, I delegated those kind of work things to them. And when they needed help, they came to me and so on and so forth. Um, and I used it as a way to, help them get training to basically take over for what I had been doing. You know, should I get promoted again, they could move one of those two up into that position without having to worry, oh, you know, do either of these folks have any of this experience that we had in in Sean? And that's another way that that promotions kind of cause a stressful situation is that you get bumped up, you have new duties, uh, you have to step back from some of your old duties which is something a lot of IT people do not like doing, especially into directors and managerial roles because they like working with computers. They don't so much like working with people and dealing with people issues because you don't get a more, you don't get concrete feedback that what you're doing is really positive unless your, your subordinates come up to you and say, hey, thanks for this, thanks for that. 
which usually doesn't happen. It's usually more about complaining about the stuff that sucks to help get it fixed. And then the third one, reorgs. Reorgs are one of the best slash worst things I've ever seen in a company. I don't really care for them most of the time because I've seen them used in improper fashion. So for example, at one of my previous workplaces, we had an entire unit dedicated to a type of service that was no longer needed. And that was four to six individuals. Opposed to the CIO going to, to this unit and saying, we don't need this anymore. Where can we move you? You know, where can we organize you better to, you know, heighten your, your good skills and help get you trained up to do a different job? Um, the CIO at the time just didn't want to deal with them. They, they were non-confrontational as a CIO. They just didn't want to, to do those things. So they reorged and moved on to those people under different supervisors. They basically split the team and said, half of them go to you and half of them go to you. And if you keep them cool, if you decide you don't want them cool, if you make them quit, fine, whatever. I just don't want to deal with it. So that's kind of a poor way to use a real to essentially solve a problem that you don't have the, the confidence to deal with in person. Realistically, what happened was most of them decided once they got put under a different manager that they'd go ahead and retire because they were of retirement age and had plenty of years. Um, some tried to stay and weren't really thrilled with the workflow changes or the other the changes in responsibilities, and they left. And then others did still stay. And then you know other reorgs I've seen is just sort of moving people between roles as a way to get them promotions and pay raises without just giving pay raises. So in some situations you maybe can't give a raise directly for one reason or another, but you can put them into a position that would get them a raise though. The responsibilities may not be uh, all that different. They may have already been kind of doing that workload and then people play the shell game with finances so that they can say, Hey, well now you're making more cause you're in this different role, but you're going to keep doing the same thing. That's not really a great way to do reorgs either. There are good ways to do reorgs though. Let's take that first example again. You have a unit of people that the service they offered within IT is no longer needed for whatever reason. The it's obsolete, it got, you know, you know, outsourced, it moved to the cloud, something like that. So you have these individuals and you don't specifically want to just cut them loose. You want to try and find something for them. So what should have happened in that regard is when the project came up that said this will make these individuals obsolete, that is when they should have started saying, where can we put you moving forward? You know, we know that this is going to make your position currently obsolete, but we're not trying to fire you because you've been a good employee for the past 20 plus years. Where can we put you? You know, what are you interested in? Try out some different units and see if there's anything in particular you like, and then we can split your positions and put them under said supervisors. Or, you know, maybe there's a new unit we could build out of what your unit was that has new roles. That's a reorg that works in a more positive light. That's a reorg that doesn't cause as much stress, though a lot of times there are individuals that have been working in IT for a long time that don't want to move from what they're doing. And if they're asked to move from what they're doing, they're going to fight the change that's making them move from what they're doing, which is a whole other topic. That's kind of it. Uh, you know, you're going to have to deal with turnover. You're going to have to deal with promotions and you're going to have to deal with reorgs. They're not going to go away. These are three tools used. You know, these are three situations that come up and, you know, some are beneficial. Some are not beneficial. Uh, some are used in a beneficial way and some are used and, and sometimes they're not used in a beneficial way. Um, you just kind of got to go with it. And if it happens to you, it happens to you. Don't let it stress you out. You know, talk to your supervisors if it does start to stress you out, especially the turnover. If turnover happens, somebody leaves and your supervisor goes, hey, I'm going to need to lean on you more. And, you know, it should only be for so many months or something like that. You know, ask about, hey, is there a stipend involved? Is there some way for me to get any sort of reimbursement for the extra workload? Are you expecting me to have to work extra hours? Things like that. Um, you know, I've gotten both of those situations where they say, oh, you know, there's some reimbursement in the form of a stipend that you can have for this many dollars to cover that. Or they'll say, well, we're not really going to add your workload. 
uh, unless it's something critical and then it would be maintenance hours anyway and that would be covered under our whatever our maintenance cycle was so it just means that we're going to slow down projects that's kind of the best way it can go for you if it's turnover is that everything just sort of slows down a little bit so that you can maintain the stuff you're working on maintain the stuff the other person was working on and train the new person um, but in a reasonable time frame and that's about it for today. So if you liked what, uh, what we're talking about, don't forget to leave a comment below. Let me know if you've dealt with any of those specific issues in your sysadmin career. And remember, we do have a Patreon if you want to support the channel. We have just purchased the new upgrade and it is going into the data center soon. So get ready for that video as well. And we'll see you in the next one.